Yo boys, we have made some changes to the start of our work to make even more gains than we were previously. Starting off with weighted chin-ups. I've actually made it, so I'm going to rotate between weighted chin-ups and weighted neutral grip pull-ups in this workout. I'm going to do three to four sets of the weighted chin-up. The same will be done with the neutral grip pull-up. And that's followed up by two to three sets of wide grip body weight pull-ups. So I'm actually doing evolving rep ranges and evolving sets with my pull-ups now. This is kind of hard to program. It's not something that you can do if you're like kind of new, but at this point, this is what I need to do to progress on my weighted pull-ups. So the number of sets I do per workout actually varies depending on my fatigue and how well I am training that day and how good I'm feeling. Regardless, the chin-ups, they're feeling pretty good today. I did stay away from the neutral grip and the chin-up because I was feeling slight elbow pain when I was doing it. I think it was golfer's elbow to be correct. It just means that I'm using my forearm too much when I'm doing my pull-ups. So in those sets, I was trying my absolute hardest to take my forearms completely out of the movement, kind of make, kind of taking my arms out slightly as well, making it as much back as possible. And that makes my forearm feel better. As you can see, we're moving on to the wide grip body weight pull-ups. As I did three sets on the wide grip chin-up because I PR'd, I'm doing three sets on the wide grip pull-up as well. If I did not PR on the chin-up, I would have done a fourth set and I would have done two sets on the wide grip pull-up just to match the volume. Boys, I usually keep my programming incredibly simple, but this is the most giga universe brain thing that I've added into my program in a very, very long time. So basically, in my three sets of the weighted chin-up, if I do not PR, if I do not do better on any single set, I will hit a fourth set to hit a tonnage PR, volume PR, and then I'll hit one less set on my body grip, wide grip pull-up to make the volume the same. It means that I'm going to PR 99% of the time, basically every single time I do the weighted chin-up, because it does not matter if I don't PR in the first three sets, I'll still hit a tonnage PR on my fourth set, as well as because it's getting put added in every second week and I'm rotating between chin-up and neutral grip, that makes it even easier for me to PR. A lot of PRs are getting broken through with this method. Next, boys, we're moving on to our favorite shoulder exercise, the deficit pipe push-up. The wrist is still not feeling great, so I actually have to put on wrist wraps after this set. I'm still unable to do the wall handstand push-up, which is a shame. However, since adding in this even bigger deficit on the deficit pipe push-up, I will assume that my wall handstand push-up will actually go up significantly when I actually go back to the exercise. But as I've already said, boys, this exercise is so goddamn good. You need to do this. And as usual, we're supersetting now. The supersets have been an absolute game changer. I've only added these in recently, but I'm going to have to make a video on these soon because it saves so much time and the concept that you're going to be tired for your next exercise because you're doing a superset and you're not going to be able to put an effort is complete rubbish. Like, that is just complete stupidity. I don't know who started pushing the agenda that you can't do supersets because you're going to get tired. I don't know why I used to think this, but it's completely not the case. I feel completely fine doing back-to-back -back exercises. Your two exercises, maybe you have like a 10-second rest, 20-second rest in between your two exercises, then you'll just have a normal rest period. This just makes it so much more efficient in your workouts to actually get a lot of volume done. Boys, when it comes to getting bigger shoulders, I would actually say that vertical pressing will be the most important. I know a lot of people push lateral raises. However, in my personal case, I very, very rarely actually do lateral raises. Most of my shoulder work is either vertical pressing or some variation of rear delt work. Very rarely will I actually train my side delts directly. However, this is something I might add in because it could make a difference. However, boys, I think most people actually neglect their vertical pressing, so I would add more of this in. And we're moving back on to the superset of the dumbbell pullover. I'm actually going very heavy here, surprisingly. I don't know why I'm quite strong at this move and I'm doing 38 kg dumbbell pullovers. Could very easily do 40. However, I'm not going to jump the gun quite yet. I might do that next week or I might milk 38 kg for a little bit longer. But imagine if I could do 60 kg dumbbell pullovers, which I'm definitely capable of. That would just be absolutely insane. My lats must absolutely explode in size as well as my serratus and my rib cage will just get even bigger, which will just make the physique 
insanely aesthetic. Next, we're moving on to curls in the squat rack. I saw a pretty funny comment, a guy saying that I'm just using the squat rack for arms, and I never actually thought about that. But like, yeah, actually, I'm just using the squat rack to train biceps and triceps. Curling this water reminds me of bro science. I don't know that you guys used to watch bro science when you're getting into the gym. That guy is absolutely hilarious. But we're just going to failure here. Very hard set, nothing crazy. Not doing any crazy rep ranges, just going straight to failure, track on progress, then trying to beat my previous PR. Progressing on the strict curl is actually very, very hard though. So I might have to think of a method where I can make that slightly easier. But next, we're moving on to the dumbbell French press. A lot, some people were commenting about doing overhead tricep work and trying to do it without elbow pain. What you guys need to understand, it took me a very long time to get to this point, months if I do say, and even then I'm still not comfortable going low reps on overhead tricep work. I think I've done 12 reps or slightly more than 12 reps here. And to get to this point, I started with 30 to 40 reps on dumbbell skull crushers and French presses and slowly worked my way up to this point. And this took maybe three months to actually get here. So it's very, very hard, but 100% worth it to get to the point where you can actually do overhead tricep work. Boys, if you want to know more about this, go look at my last video called Why You Don't Have Big Arms. And in the comments, there's a comment from good guy Mario. You can have a look at that little back and forth. I kind of talk about how I accustom my triceps a bit if you want more information on that. But next, we're finishing off with a superset of abs and rear delts. I found doing leg raises is actually enough if you just do it properly. I said this previously, but you really need to like feel the mind muscle connection. A lot of people end up using their hip flexors and they swing around on the bar. If you do this exercise correctly, there should be zero swing in yourself and you should feel it all in your abs. If you kind of tense your abs, your legs should pop up. Then you can just finish the movement after that. And next we're moving on to the rear delt fly. I actually quite like this exercise now. The only downside, as I said, is that there's a bit of lower back fatigue, but if you can actually manage that, I feel this is very good. As it's just so easy to superset in wherever you are, you just grab a pair of dumbbells and move wherever you want. I'm going up to 20 reps here, including a little bit of partials. I always found that partials work really, really well for rear delt training. So if you struggle for rear delts, add in some partials. But that is the end of the video, boys. Thank you for watching. This is a little update to my previous voiceover video of what I'm doing now. But yeah.